Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Eddie Jennings from EJSLLC.com. This video is going to be another in my series of RHCSA practice sessions where I'm not necessarily trying to give authoritative information as much as I'm trying to talk through the objectives, make sure I'm, uh, I can speak intelligently about them, and uh, run through some examples of each objective like in a, um, in a real world configuration um, scenario. My goal at the end of these videos is to have a pretty good idea if I, I know what's going on with the objective or if I need to do a bit more uh, study as I prepare for the RHCSA exam. Before I dive in, I want to remind you if you enjoy the content of the video, make sure you click like and also um, hit the subscribe button and ring the bell when you do so you can be aware of when new content comes available. The um, the objective for, for this particular video is within managed security for the RHCSA objectives and it is the set enforcing and permissive modes for SE Linux. I thought about doing just one video on SE Linux but really um, uh, a couple of these kind of deserve their own um, their own video and, and, and this is one of them. So SE Linux just from from what I have seen kind of getting into the Linux world over the last uh, couple of years and preparing for this exam this is something that tends to scare people I'm not 100% sure why yes it does present um, another layer of security which can present a layer of challenges for configuration and, and, and things to consider but uh, if, if you go on the internet and find guides and such there, there are less and less of these now, thankfully, but there are still some out there that basically say, turn SC Linux off. And that is the incorrect approach for um, CentOS or a RHEL-based system or Fedora. SC Linux is there for a reason. It, um, in my opinion, adds decent um, security at not too much of an extra configuration cost. What it is, um, is, well, before I dive, dive into that, I want to go ahead and say I'm not an SE Linux expert. I, I, I know how to configure some basic stuff for it, obviously, because I'm, I'm, I'm preparing for this exam. So if, if there's some uh, minutia I get wrong, by all means, if, if you are an expert in SE Linux, feel free to leave comments to, to both set me straight and give everyone accurate information. But generally, the, the, the way SE Linux is going to work all of your processes and such are going to run as as some type of a user, either running as root or some um, system account and, and such. And also your directories have the basic um, user group other permissions for access and writing and, and, and execution. And what SC Linux does is is add to that. The example I'm going to be using is going to be it will involve the HTTPD server and um, the, the, the Apache web server. And the, let me, let me think for just a moment how, how I want to describe this. The way the SE Linux configurations are going to work is by default there are certain directories and such that have a um, context that says the Apache web server can manipulate these directories, can, can do certain things. And the idea behind that is, um, let's say that um, the HTTP service running as Apache tries to do something in the boot directory. Well, permission-wise, it's not outside the realm of possibility, especially if you have um, if you have something misconfigured that uh, Apache, the Apache user, might be able to have some type of permissions to the the uh, boot directory. With SC Linux, however, if the Apache service tries to do anything with the boot directory, SC Linux is going to stop that because SE Linux is going to see whatever contexts are configured for the boot directory and say, hey, this isn't something that Apache can do. And it, it, it stops uh, whatever system calls Apache is trying to do. The other thing with SE Linux, from my understanding, is it follows the, if something is not explicitly allowed, deny it as far as system calls. Luckily, with SC Linux, there, there are some default uh, policies and such that are already there. And I'm not going to go into the configuration of policies. I know that's outside the scope of RHCSA, and quite frankly, it's outside the scope of my uh, knowledge of, of, of SC Linux. But understand that it is, by default, a give, uh, block everything unless permission is given, but also um, in default installations of RHEL and, and CentOS and Fedora, 
you will have um, policies built in to where your system can actually function, you know, when you first install the OS. For the Debian side, I believe the, I'm not sure if it's, if equivalent is the right word, but they have something called AppArmor, which, um, which I think is like the, the alternative to, to SC Linux, but unfortunately, I I've, I've, I've know very little about that, so I, I can't speak in, intelligently to it because most of my experience has been in the CentOS and RHEL world. So getting into that, the, the first objective here talks about enforcing and permissive modes. Now, I'm going to SSH into a different VM that is a minimal server install. get into that there. Hey, I got the password the first time. You, if, if you've watched any of my other um, R8 CSA videos, you know that I tend to fat finger this little password at least two or three times a video. So let me sudo into root. Now that I've said that, my very next one's probably going to be fat fingered. Oh no, I'm two in a row. This, is, this is, might be a good sign I'm going to pass the R8 CSA. I can do my password correctly. Anyway, so now here is root. And the command that you would use to check the current mode of SD Linux is get enforce. And it says that it is enforcing, which means that whatever SC Linux configuration you have is active and it will be blocking things from, from, from working. Now there is a mode called permissive mode and to be able to change the mode here you would do set enforce and you can either, I know you can do zero, that's typically what I do, if I do get enforce, that will be permissive. Set enforce one will change it back to enforcing. And I think you can use the word too, so let's try set enforce permissive. Yeah, so that works, and then set enforce enforcing. If I spell enforcing correctly, and then get enforce. Yeah, I typically do the number, you know, you can use either. But as I am changing that, I'm basically t telling SE Linux either to enforce and block stuff or allow it but make a note of it in logging. And where that's going to be noted is the audit log, and you can find that if I were to ls var log audit. You see audit.log. I'm not going to go into that uh, in, in this particular video. There, there's another one that deals with um, SC Linux policy violations, and I'll dive a little bit more into audit.log in that video. Now, one thing to note is using set enforce is not a, um, a persistent change. So therefore, if you were to reboot your server, it's going to go back to whatever the default is. So the question then becomes, how do you set the default? So if I were to go into Etsy, And I believe, let's see, this configuration file might be in the, nope, it's in the SE Linux folder. That's it. So I'm going to go into SE, SE Linux. And I don't do this that often because I typically always leave SE Linux as enforcing by default. And we're going to take a look at the config file within Etsy, SE Linux. And you notice where we have SC Linux, it has enforcing. Now, there is an option for disabled. And you cannot set this with the set enforce command, which is generally a good thing. And if you set this to disabled upon reboot, um, SC Linux will be completely off. Not only will it be allowing whatever could would be blocked by SC Linux to do its thing, it is not going to um, show any any log of it. I really can't think of a good reason to use um, disabled. If you do need to temporarily turn off SC Linux to try to figure out, you know, what particular aspect of its configuration um, to to troubleshoot, you would use permissive. Permissive. If you're in some situation where you absolutely can't use SC Linux, which again, I mean, let's say there's an application that hey, to run this you can't use SC Linux. In my humble opinion, you don't use the application. You wouldn't tell the developer or whatever like look make your application work with SC Linux but that's just me I'm sure there might be some developers out there that will gripe and complain but oh well even in that situation I would still uh, just set this to be permissive by default so that way 
um, you would at least have the audit log showing potential violations of SC Linux so, so, so you can deal with other, um, other problems since aforementioned application is forcing you to use an um, unsecure system. So I'm not going to change this to um, to permissive or in, or or disabled. I just want to show you this is where you make that change. If there's some task that says completely disable SC Linux uh, and have that configuration persist. So to kind of show this enforcing and permissive in action, let me um, quit out of that. I'm going to I'm going to go and install Apache. And you can do this with other things. Apache is one of the quickest things to, to get going. And what I'm going to do after this installs is I'm going to set the document root for this to be a, a different directory and see if we can load the page. So I'm going to make a directory. We're going to call it web oh, slash make deer. Make deer slash web. And I'm going to make a little. Uh, index.html file. So this is a test web page. And I'm going to redirect that to web index.html. I'm also going to give the Apache user ownership of both the directory and index.html because that's, that's what it's going to need. So let's go into HTTPD uh, configuration file real quick and we're just going to change document root. Well, it'll be quicker if I just search for document root but I'll be there in just a moment. I'm not a master of HTTPD configuration but I can at least do some basic stuff with that. And we'll set the directive for what would have been document root down here to be web as well. And let us start HTTPD. All right, so let me open a browser. This will probably take a moment. This VM only has a couple of gigs of RAM. It's not super powerful. and I love Firefox, but Firefox can take a little bit of time to load. And let's just go, I'm going to go to index. Let's just go to HTTP uh, 192.168.122.116. All right, unable to connect. That makes sense because I need to allow um, HTTP traffic. So we'll do that real quick. And I'm just doing this in the runtime environment. Of course, on the uh, you know, if I had to do, if I had to set up HTTP D on the exam, I would obviously do that with permanence. And we have the um, the test page, which we expect. So if I were to go here and do slash index.html, I get forbidden. You don't have permission to access this, and that is because the context is not set correctly. If I were to do ls-z on the root here. We see for web the SE Linux context is undefined default type. If I were to do this on var, you see www has HTTPD sys content. And if I were to keep going, you see HTML has the same. And that's that's where uh, by default you would be putting your, your web stuff. So by having that incorrect context, even though Apache, if I were to do ls-l on root, you see Apache has ownership, it can read um, the, the directory, and if I were to do that again on web, you see that it also has uh, read access to index.html. It's SC Linux that's preventing that. So if you have some kind of application where it's just not working, you know your permissions are right, as a troubleshooting step, we can do this set enforce zero, which changes this to permissive. And let's try to reload the page. And now it's going to show. 
but there will be a setting in the audit log that um, indicates that, that there, there was a problem. SC Linux allowed it because you've put it into permissive mode, but there was still an SC Linux policy violation. So um, the, 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 the takeaway here is always have SC Linux on, even I guess outside the Arch CSA, just in real life have that, and then use the set and force zero to go into permissive mode if you need to do uh, troubleshooting. I do not recommend uh, flat out disabling SE Linux because I really, especially since permissive mode exists, I don't see the, the, the benefit of just outright disabling it. If you can think of some reasons, feel free to, to, to put them in the comments, but it's kind of like my opinion on always having a firewall, even on, on local systems running, people say, oh, it breaks stuff. In my opinion, not if you configure it right, but I'm not going to get into that soapbox on this video. This is about SE Linux. Speaking of, uh, of the video, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you click like. Also, subscribe, ring the bell when you do. As I've mentioned a few times, don't hesitate to put comments, ask questions. I'll answer to the best of my ability as I have time. And if I got something wrong, by all means, comment on that. That way myself and, and others can, can learn. Thank you for taking the time to watch, and I'll see you the next time.